guys. <clears throat> Happy Thursday, everyone. How are we doing? Give this a share. What's up, friends? Oh, we're so close. We're so close to the weekend. And I was just looking around. I'm like a minute late. And <laughs> it's because I was putting my earrings on and I'm like looking around and like, I don't know. I don't know what happened yesterday. Maybe yesterday when I left my studio, I must have been in a hurry. Like, I don't even really remember. I was pretty tired yesterday, though, but I left junk everywhere. Like, <laughs> I came in here now and I'm like, what? Why is this in here? I left an empty drink can in here. There's an empty water bottle. It's like, who are you? Why did you leave trash in here? <laughs> like, jewelry mess is one thing but it's really weird for me to leave like other things laying around it's just like what what were you doing yesterday <laughs> hi everyone so glad to see you guys hi love wires i still love that i hope i always love that <laughs> do you guys love it as well oh my goodness so how's everybody doing there's miss sherry there's joan there's donna so glad to see you guys all right, guys, so let's talk about today's project. This whole week we've been focusing on pearls, which was by request and a very good request, I might add, because I love pearls. I love them. I, I know. I carried on and on about them um, on Tuesday. I won't carry on about them today, but just know, just in case you forgot, I do love pearls. <laughs> and so we are focusing on a pearl project today that, this is not like the most original design in the whole world, okay? I've seen variations of this exact design in a bunch of different kinds of beads. You know, the style itself is not exactly original. However, that being said, there's a reason why we see things um, over and over again, right? When we see a project or we see a style that people are recreating over and over again, it's because it's a good one. You're going to you're gonna file that away in your classics list of designs. And this is one of those that you can change the beads up, you can change the leather up, you can change the look, but the style is not going anywhere. People make this and will remake this a million times in a million different ways. Um, so don't expect that you're going to see anything like earth shattering brand new here today because you're not. This is not an original, you know, design idea. Um, but it's a good one. Like I said, it's one that I've seen recreated so many times that it's always interesting to see how other people put it together. And that's what we're going to do today. And I'm actually going to be hand knotting the, the pearls in today's project with the Beadalon knotter tool. And there are a lot of these tools out there like beadalon has got a couple of them there are a couple of other companies that have them as well I've never used anybody but Beadalons, to be completely honest with you um and I've been through a bunch of these because I have actually broken them because I'm very very hard on these tools and that being said they're worth it they're so worth it if you if you struggle with knots this is going to solve your problems it does take a little bit of practice I'm not going to lie uh, my technique is maybe a little bit different than what some of the other techniques out there are. So I'm going to try my best to explain this in a way that is easy to understand. Um, because if you don't follow the steps the way I show you how to follow the steps, it, it will still work, but it does cause a little bit of frustration. And so I feel like a lot of times the instructions for this tool are over, what's the, they're not, they're not overdone, it's just they're overly complicated, right? The way that they are explained is overly complicated. It does look like a giant seam ripper, right? <laughs> it totally does. Um, so I'm gonna try, you guys. I'm gonna try to break this down. I've worried about this project all week um, because I love knotting pearls. I love knotting anything. It doesn't just have to be pearls. Um, something happens to your beads when you thread them on a piece of silk and not in between them. I don't know what it is, um, you know, hand knotted pearls is one of the oldest jewelry making techniques in the world, right? I don't even know the origins of it. Wyatt White does. He can tell you all about it. <laughs> and I hope to do him just a grain of sand worth of justice today in showing you today's project. Um, but this is, you know, this is the traditional method as far as having a tool. 
is concerned, okay? Because the real traditional way is is obviously with some pliers and a, you know a needle and that whole bit, and that's that's overly um, hard <laughs> for me. Thank goodness we have a tool, <laughs> so you know. Um, you can use Eslon the same way. Yes. Okay. That's a great question because I'm going to be using silk cord for this because like I was trying to explain, when you put your beads, whether it's pearls, whether it's Swarovski crystals, Chinese crystals, gemstones, whatever it is, when you put them on silk cord, something magical kind of happens. It becomes this most elegant drape that... Bead stringy wire tries. It really tries. And it's getting very close. 49 strand bead stringy wire is very close in that drape. But nothing, nothing, hands down, nothing else out there drapes like per, or like silk cord. That's just the way it is. Um, that's why the most expensive pearl necklaces in the world are hand knotted. They're knotted on silk. They are done very, very tediously. It is, you know, it is a painstaking process. The look is something you will not find anywhere else. The feel of the piece, whether it's glass beads or pearls or whatever, will feel different than anything else that you have. I promise. If you don't believe me, try it. Take some pearls, take some glass beads, use your check glass beads and knot in between them on a piece of silk and then do the same beads and put them on a piece of bead stringing wire and feel the difference. It's unbelievable. So that like I could carry on and on about it forever and ever just because there I don't think people understand the difference and there really is a difference. However, that being said, and going back to the question, can you do this on Eslon? You can, okay? And you're going to get close. You're going to get really close to the same results. Um it's not going to be quite the same drape as the silk, but you're going to get the same look. You're going to get the same, all of your beads with the perfect little knots in between them, and it's going to be gorgeous, right? It's going to be absolutely elegant and beautiful no matter what it is. Um, and you can knot in between anything. As long as your tool will hook onto it, you can use your knotter tool to do it. So cotton cord, hemp, those things, anything that you need a little extra help making a good tight knot up against the side of the bead, that's the problem is getting that knot right up next to the side of the bead. The tool is really going to help you achieve that because yes, you could tie an overhanded knot all day long, but it's the matter of getting the knots precise right up next to the bead where there's no wiggle room in between there and for all the knots to be going in the same direction, right? Does that make sense? So the tool is really going to help you with that. Um, but yes, you can use whatever kind of stringing material you want to to create your knots. Well, except for like beading, you know, bead stringing wire. I don't think it would knot tight enough, but you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you how to do some knotted um, pearls. I'm not going to show you the starting and the finish of a knotted pearl strand because it's different than what we're actually doing today. However, if you want to see that, please let me know because I would love to show you that as well. There is a technique to starting and stopping a pearl, just a single, you know, a, a single strand of pearls. Um, that is a technique all in itself, which Seems like it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it actually kind of is. So if you ever want to see that, let me know. More than happy to show that to you. Um, also want to say, before we get started, everybody, Katie Mann's birthday is tomorrow. Everybody say happy birthday to, Kay to Katie. <laughs> happy birthday, Katie, putting you on the spot. <laughs> Katie is a staple around here. She is she is one of our head live wires. She is always on board for lives. So everybody wish Miss Katie an early birthday. Uh, yes. Jean says, please show start, show the start and end. All right. I will plan that because pearls guys are not going away, which we all know. Um, I'll plan that for next week. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Um, because it's, it's a, it's a strange technique, but it's a great one to know. You know, if you're going to knot pearls, you got to know how to do it. All right. Yes, yes. Oh, lots of lots of people asking about that. Okay, great. That's perfect. Guys, let's plan on um, Tuesday of next week, since it's Technique Tuesday. Let's do that for Tuesday of next week. Just, you know, mark it in your brain and I'll mark it on our events calendar. Okay. All right, guys, let's get down to business here. Um, a lot to show you. So buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> All right. So, 
have everything adjusted here. Be sure that we've got plenty of room for what we're doing. Mm hmm. Okay, so as far as the silk cord is concerned, <clears throat> I get all of my silk cord. It comes on a card. It already has a needle attached to it. Um, I get this from Beetleon.com. So if you're looking for silk, they have tons of silk cord and they have it in um, they have it in a lot of different sizes. The size is pretty important, you guys. And here's the thing. Here's something that I've noticed. I've been I've been making jewelry for a while and um, <laughs> for more than a minute. And a lot of times when you go to the box stores and you're looking for silk cord, the most common sizes are going to be number four and number six. I don't know why. I don't understand why. Because number four is really, really very, very thin. Number six is just a little step up from that, right? But it's not thick enough for most beads. That totally, I'm so confused by that. I have been in the situation where I've got a project that's due. I don't have any silk cord. I've got to run to the store to grab some. I grab some beads that are hanging on a card. And then I go over and I pick up the silk cord and it's a size six and I bring it home and I get excited. I'm like, yep, we're going to get going. And the knots that the number six silk makes slips through the bead holes. It's not thick enough. I don't know why. I wish that I could write whoever it is. Those I wish I could write those people a letter and say, look guys, can we bump up the size of the silk? Just one more. Go from six to eight, please, because it makes a knot that is big enough to hold your beads, your glass beads, right? Not everybody is going to be stringing pearls. A lot of people want to, you know, knot between their glass beads and it just it just isn't, size six is not big enough. So I know I've carried on and on about that. However, the reason that I'm telling you that is because if you want size eight for your glass beads, you're going to have to order it online. You're going to have to get it from, um, you're going to have to get it from Beetleon. Um, you're going to have to get it from other sources because in the store, all you're going to get is the six. And yeah, there was the question, um, do you think the size is because pearl holes are usually small? That, sh that is pretty much the reason why, I'm sure. However, um, when it comes to knotting anything other than pearls, you're, you're out of luck. You know, you're really, really out of luck if you want something that's got a needle on the end of it. And that, to me, is, a, is, is kind of a big deal. Speaking of which, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the get the needle out from underneath all of this silk here. But you can get all of the silk cord that you need in any size that you want from the Beetleon.com website, okay? Just, just in case you're looking. All right, so here's the needle that's on the end, guys. The needle is a, a really, really super fine needle. It's twisted wire, and it is not a straight needle, obviously, which is fine. We don't need it to be straight as long as it does the job. You want to take all of your cord off of the card, and then you want to stretch it out a little bit. Now, once upon a time, when it came to silk cord that you got on a card, you needed to wet it and stretch it and let it dry. I am not about that life. <laughs> And I feel like the um, the Griffin company that makes this silk on the on the cord or on the card, they've kind of um, they've they've come up in time with the rest of us and realized that it's it needs to be pre-stretched. So that being said, I've never had a Griffin silk that stretched out on me later. Um, and that's usually, you know, it, if you're buying silk from, you know, I don't know, somebody else, you, you probably do have to. You need to wet it, stretch it, and then let it dry. But with the Griffin, I, I never do that. And I've never had any problems. Um, getting the kinks out, you just want to kind of do the best that you can to, to stretch it out with your hands to get the kinks out of it. Um, the kinks don't bother me. I don't feel like, uh, you know, it's ever been a, a an issue with a design. But if it does bother you, you can hit this with, um, if you've got a ribbon, a ribbon iron, which is just a really low heat iron, um, you can hit it with one of those, or you can use the, a low setting on your clothes iron, right, and, and do that. But it's never been a bother to me. That See that little kink right there? That's not enough for me to, like, lose my mind over. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so I've pulled all of the silk off of the card, and I'm going to come to the end here. Now, this is the part that's kind of messy, and there's no real rhyme or reason to this part. Um, I'm going to attach my ends to a little connector. I'm using this little, it's a ring, it's kind of square shaped. This is from Tierra Cast, it's part of the um, Dolce Vita, Vita collection. And you can use whatever you want to. So if you want to use like chain links or anything like that, or just a large jump ring, that's totally fine. All I want to do is I want to knot this to this. <laughs> and it's, it's really, I wish I had like, oh, such a pretty way to knot this on. And I don't, I don't. Okay. I'm going to do like a little lark's head knot. So making my loop. I've got a short end and a long end. I'm going to pull those through my lark's head knot. Like, however you want to knot this onto whatever you're going to use as your kind of go-between piece, that's that's what I suggest doing. Okay, so there's my little lark's head knot. I'm going to kind of bring it over to one of the corners. Okay, then I'm going to tie an overhanded knot. I just want to secure my silk. That's all. And later on, I'm going to add glue to this and, you know, I'll clean up the knot a little bit. But for now, I just want it to be attached, right? All right. So now I know my silk is secured. I do have a little short end here. Like I said, when we get all of our beads on here, we get them knotted, we'll add some glue to this and then we'll trim this, this part off. We won't need it. Okay. So just however you can get it secured, that makes you happy. I spend, I can get obsessive about this part. And, you know, there are some techniques. There are some fancy knots you can do. There's all kinds of this stuff that you can do. But really and truly, all you're looking for is just a secure knot that looks decent. Okay, so don't get hung up on that part. Believe me, I've already done that. <laughs> Don't do what I do. All right, so now that's the end of our that's the end of our silk cord here, right? Now I'm going to come to the other end with my needle, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and thread on 13 pearls or however many pearls you want. I'm using freshwater pearls. These are big chunky monkey guys, okay? These are big pearls. These are the ones that I've actually been using all week because I had a a lot of them. <laughs> And so something before you get started, you want to make sure that your pearls are going to fit, right? Because as was mentioned earlier, um, you, you may find that the pearls, the hole that is drilled through the pearl is a little on the tiny, tiny, teeny beanie side. If that's the case, you probably want to use a bead reamer and ream out the hole of the pearl before you use it. So the best suggestion that I have is that you check first before you commit to making a design. And so I've checked all of these. I know that all of them will fit over the needle and then slide onto the silk cord. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put... I say that and watch this one get stuck. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and thread on 13 of my pearls. These pearls are size nine ish. I say that because they could, some of them are more closer to maybe 10 millimeters. Um, but nine millimeter is, is what the little card I had with them said. <laughs> All right. So there's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Ooh. 11, 12, and 13. All right, so I've thread 13 pearls on, and I know some of you have never done this before, like why? You didn't make any knots. Why did you just thread them all on? <laughs> That's because we're going to do these one at a time, but it saves me time to go ahead and have a big group of pearls already on my cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide these down closer to where 
our connection is. Now, I don't want to get right up next to it, right? But I want to be, you know, a few inches away, right? So I've got about 12 inches between our, our connection and our first pearl, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the very first pearl on the end of all of the ones that I added, and I'm going to slide it down right up next to that knot that we made, okay? And you know what, just to save us, because I don't want you guys to get confused by this little piece, I'm gonna trim it off a little bit, okay? I'm not gonna cut it all the way down because I haven't put any glue on it yet. Um, but I don't want you to get confused by that little tail that's hanging there. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do, okay? Take all of your pearls and your thread and put it over here to the left, okay? Or your non-dominant side, okay? The pearl that we just slid down, we want all that over here on our right where we can get to it with our, our dominant hand, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cord and I'm gonna take two fingers on my non-dominant hand, okay? And I'm gonna wrap the cord around those two fingers, right, to make a loop. Then I'm gonna take my bead and my connector and I'm gonna drop that through the center of that loop I made with my fingers. Now don't worry, I'm gonna show you this a bunch, okay? So don't worry if you miss it the first time, you're gonna see it. Um, question, what is silk cord? It is cord made out of silk. <laughs> it's just natural silk that's been twisted together and it has a needle on the end of it that is um, specifically designed for knotting. I wish I had a better answer, but I don't. <laughs> Okay, now that I have made the loop, okay, my tool, I didn't even explain the tool to you. Let me do that, okay? The tool has a needle on it, a bent needle, and then it has a yoke. You see the yoke? It's that Y-shaped thing. That's where we're going to create our knot around the needle part, okay? The Y-shape is what we're going to have our knot up against, you hold the tool in your hand just like this and you're gonna use your thumb to push up the yoke and that's gonna deliver that knot right next to the bead, okay? So I'm sorry that I didn't I didn't go through that ahead of time, but that's that's the process. It's just pushing this little guy up. That's all there is to it. But first you've gotta hook your thread, okay? So our loop is going around our fingers our curve in our needle is curving towards the right, which is our dominant hand, okay? We're going to hook our thread just like that. And it's easy to remember because it's got the curve in it. Hook the thread in the curve, right? Now take your finger and place it at the, the yoke and the needle. And now you can let go, right? And pull your knot. So you're pulling your knot right up against the bead, okay? You wanna pull that thread straight up and down, okay? Now take that thread, turn the tool, place that thread into the yoke, pull tight, right? Pull tight with your left hand, use your right hand to deliver that knot right next to the pearl. Now you're gonna to get to see that a bunch, okay? So if you missed it that time, that's okay. It's okay, we've got 13 pearls and then we've got a center piece and 13 more pearls. So you're gonna get plenty of time to see this, okay? So I've got a knot perfectly delivered right next to our pearl. I'm gonna take the next pearl, slide it down, right up against that knot that we just made, right? Okay, now this is the same technique. We're not changing it. It's the same thing over and over again. Take your two fingers on your, your non-dominant hand, Wrap the cord around to make a loop, right? Take your pearls, drop them into the center of that loop, right? This strand is gonna get longer and longer, so you're gonna have a lot of pearls to drop down through that, that loop. Take your tool, hook it, hook the thread. Put your finger on there just so that your, your thread doesn't slide off. Now you can take your fingers out of the loop, pull up, it's gonna pull that knot right up next to your, your pearl, okay? Put the thread in the yoke, give it a good pull, push, and there's your knot. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> a 
and and really once I, you know once you get the loop and the drop you're you're golden you're absolutely golden easy as can be okay all right curl number three sliding it down right up against the knot we just made taking the thread looping around my fingers okay there's my loop i'm going to drop all those pearls right into the middle ouch <laughs> watch out for that needle take the needle hook your thread hold the thread let go of the loop pull straight up right put the thread in the yoke and boom done so easy i know jean says love this others have made this so confusing that's what i'm saying and that's why i've worried about this project all week because it does seem very complex it really seems complex it seems complicated it seems like there's a lot of steps people never know how to hook the needle on there they do it the wrong way and it'll still work but it it becomes frustrating, right? You feel like you're fighting against the cord. If you figure out how to hook that needle, then the 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 major part of this has has been solved. No joy, I promise you can do it. You can do it. You so can do this. Okay? There's my next pearl. Bringing it down right up against the knot I just made. Okay? <laughs> Does it matter what way you hook the thread? Yes, everything has to do with how you hook the thread. That is the most important part of the entire thing. I wish this cord would get out of my way. <laughs> yeah, that part is the, that's the part, okay? That's the main, main part. So you're gonna get to see it a lot more, okay? Pull the pearl down. Notice where the cord is in relation to my hand, okay? It's underneath my hand. Before I make my loop, my cord is underneath my fingers, okay? I go around the front of my fingers, around the back of my fingers to make that loop, okay? So my two pieces of cord are kind of exiting, crisscrossing each other over here on the outside of my index finger, okay? Take all of the pearls, drop them straight down into that loop that you just made. Now, this is the important part, like you just asked. This is the important part. See the, the bend in the needle? That tells you which direction to hook. So hook it just right there, right? I'm going kind of back here between my fingers behind the cord and hooking it from underneath, okay? Put your finger there, hold that cord in place, pull your knot up against your bead, Put the cord in the yoke. Don't forget this part because this is this is what makes your knot tight, okay? And then push the tool and it's gonna deliver the knot right next to the bead, okay? All right, so we've done four. Let's keep going, okay? Pulled our next one down, looping around my two fingers, dropping all of that through the loop, okay? Hook, finger, let go. Pull, cord goes in the yoke, pull, push up, and you got a knot. <laughs> Donna says, I need this tool. Everybody needs this tool because they're, the feeling, I wish I could hand this to you through the iPad so you guys could feel what this feels like. It's amazing. It's amazing what it feels like. It feels like the most luxurious piece of jewelry you've ever had. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that. That's for real. Silk does something to beads. I don't know what, but the way the silk feels with the beads on it is unlike anything else. Okay. Again, drop the bead down, two fingers, wrap around, make a loop, drop all the beads down into there. Boop. Just like that. Got my hook, grab that cord, put my finger there, take my fingers out of the loop, Pull up to get that knot next to the beads, put the cord in the yoke, and push. Okay. What size is the silk cord? So I'm using size eight. Size eight is my go-to size. How does it differ using leather? So using leather, you're gonna get a bulkier knot, um, but it's the same technique, exactly the same technique, right? Okay, two fingers, wrap around to make a loop, 
drop the beads through the loop, hook, attach, or not attach, but hold on with your finger, pull. Oh, I, see, and I can tell if my knot is, if I'm struggling, I'm, I hooked it the wrong way. So I'm just going to pull out. You can always tell if you struggle with pulling the knot up close to the bead, that means that you, you didn't hook your cord the right way. Okay. So around my fingers, drop through the loop. Okay. Hook, finger, let go, pull. See that one went much smoother into the, the yoke here and push up. All right, so it doesn't matter, guys. What size leather do you recommend? Well, you know, you can try any of them and see what works. I will tell you that the thicker the, um, the, the material you're gonna create the knots with, it does get a little bit trickier. So if you're gonna try leather, and, and it does work with leather, okay? If you're gonna do leather, I would probably try with, um, with a smaller, maybe a 0.5 or a one millimeter leather to get the feel of it before you go with the larger leather. Just because it feels different, not because the technique is different. Um, it's just because it's a bulkier, you know, it's a bulkier material and so you're going to get a bigger knot and um, you know it just feels a little bit different but it totally will work the same way you just got to be patient with it that's all um, but yeah start smaller and, and kind of work your way up you know the thicker the material it just feels a little bit different when you're using the tool up against those different um, kinds of materials okay we're gonna slide down another knot and look how fast it's going too. You'll see that it's another one of those things that you can do. Okay, there's the loop, dropping all the beads down. It's one of those things that once you get the hang of it, you can do this while you're watching TV, which is something that I, I'm like, I know I've said that about a lot of things, but this it really and truly is one of the things that I have been known to do with a bead board in my lap to just sit and watch TV and not not beads because you know you get the feel for it and then you're like okay I can do this without really paying much attention <laughs> and you can knot your gemstone beads and your pearls and your your Swarovski which looks amazing knotted um really quickly doing it that way all right next pearl wrap around your two fingers to make your loop your little lasso drop all your beads down in the middle of the loop okay Take your tool, hook, finger just to hold it, pull, cord in the yoke, push up, and you've got your knot. Now something that I want you to notice is notice how tight those knots are up next to the bead. There's no wiggle room in between there, right? The beads are not going anywhere. That's the point of the pearls being knotted. Originally, the reason people hand knotted pearls was because you don't want your pearls to sit up next to each other and rub up against each other, right? Because pearls are soft and they will damage each other. So they put knots in between them to keep them all safe from each other, right? But in doing so, it makes the most beautiful drape. <laughs> Megs, the most beautiful drape. Anne says, this is the best tutorial I've ever seen. I was hooking the silk the wrong way. I'm telling you, it makes all the difference. Makes all the difference in the world by hooking it. You can hook it a different way and you're still gonna get a knot, but you're gonna fight with that cord and it makes it frustrating. So if you can figure out, okay, I see the bend in the needle, that's the direction I need to hook. Then it's it kind of, it gets in your brain that way, right? All right, let's see here. Um, yes, and if your thread breaks, you don't lose all your pearls. Exactly, exactly. If your thread breaks, then you've still got secure pearls. You might lose one on the floor. But other than that, the rest of them are going to be secure. Because remember, when we talked about pearls, these freshwater pearls are all uneven. They're all, they all have their own personality because the perfect pearls are the ones that nobody can afford. <laughs> right? You buy them one at a time because they're like diamonds. You have to, you know, you're going to spend $10,000 on a perfect pearl. That's why we, we don't use perfect pearls, right? The same reason I use Swarovski instead of diamonds because um, I'm just a regular person. <laughs> 
particular person. All right, I'm going to thread down another purl, okay? Two fingers, make the loop, drop the pearls down inside the loop, okay? Taking my hook, hook the thread, needle up against it, let go, pull, Okay, thread goes into the yoke and delivers the knot. Okay. I'm a beating goddess. I will take it. I will take it. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> I am a beating goddess. Well, you know, it's just years of trial and error. <laughs> I just save you the hard part, right? I've already done all the fails. I've already done all the wrong things. <laughs> so I can show it to you the right way and you don't have to go through all of that trouble. <laughs> all right, next bead. All right, loop. Take all of the pearls, drop them down into the loop. <clears throat> Take your hook, hook it on, hold on with your finger, pull, okay, Thread goes into the yoke, deliver the knot. Ta-da! And we only have two more to go, and then we're gonna do our little centerpiece, okay? It would go the exact same way left-handed, just mirror image of exactly what I'm doing. Um, as far as anything else, I can't tell you because I'm not left-handed. <laughs> But it's it's going to be the same. You're just going to switch and work in the opposite direction, okay? Um, it's not one of those things where even if you're left-handed, you have to do it the right-handed way, which is good. <laughs> all right, loop around my fingers to create the loop. Drop all of the beads down through. Taking my needle, hooking the thread, let go, pull the knot, okay, into the yoke, push and deliver the knot. All right, one more. <laughs> Colleen, <laughs> I'm not so smart. I'm just, just like I said, I've, I've just, I've done it all the wrong way. So I can, I can show you the right way. <laughs> I made all of the mistakes, so you don't have to. Already did all that part for you. Hook, let go, pull. Thread goes into the yoke and deliver the knot. Okay, so we've got 13. And look, you can already see the drape in this. I know it's hard to see at the angle that you're at, but oh my gosh, the drape. It just, nothing in the in the whole world feels like this. It just feels, and I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I'm not, I'm not superficial. I'm not into money. I'm not into wealth. I'm just regular folks, but it feels expensive, right? It feels like money. I, <laughs> and I mean that in the most luxurious sense of the word, like it feels expensive, there's nothing, there's nothing that you can compare it to. Okay, so we've got one side of our necklace, the beaded portion of our necklace, and we've worked ourselves down here to the center. So for our center, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a turquoise chunk that I have misplaced. Okay, so I have this little chunk of turquoise that I've been holding on to forever and a day. I don't really know why, but I thought it would look really good in the center with a tassel. We're going to wait and do the tassel part at the end, but I do need to go ahead and secure my piece of turquoise to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle, okay? I'm going to thread it through the piece of turquoise, okay? And pull that about halfway through my thread, well, a little bit more than halfway, okay? Okay, so I've thread on my turquoise chunk. Now, I'm gonna take a six millimeter jump ring. I'm gonna hook my six millimeter jump, jump ring on. I'm gonna bring it down, okay? Now, I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go back through the piece of turquoise or whatever, piece, whatever you want here, just a decorative bead, okay? Back through and pull. And this is gonna pull that jump ring right up to our piece and then I'm gonna pull out the rest of the slack. Okay, so I'm gonna just slide, slide our piece of turquoise up next to the last knot that we made. Just make sure that your bead here that you're gonna use as your focal bead 
it has a big enough hole that you can get your silk thread through it twice. That's the biggest part, okay? Um, the rest of it is just threading it on. It, but you got to be sure because that that number eight silk, it's you know, it's not super super thin. Now I'm just pulling out the slack and kind of straightening up the thread because it wants to twist on me, All right? So just pulling out the slack to pull that jump ring up. Okay, and now you can see my knot on one side and that's our centerpiece. So now instead of starting at the top and working down, now we're, we're starting from the middle and working our way out, okay? So we're gonna treat this just like we would if this were a, um, a, you know, a pearl, okay? So I'm gonna loop around my fingers, drop all those beads down, come in with my tool, hook the thread, pull and pull that knot right up next to that chunky monkey bead and then deliver. So now coming out of my piece of turquoise or your, your focal bead, you actually have two knots. That's going to help kind of make a V, right? So that you can. All right, looks. <laughs> We're back. We're back. We're back. Oh, I lost so many people. I'm back now. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, you guys. We lost connection there for a second. So I didn't move on anymore um, while it was trying to reconnect. I just uh, thread on the remaining pearls. So I haven't gone anywhere. You didn't miss anything. Okay. The focus is off a little bit. Give it just a second. All right, so we're back. Let me roll back because I saw there was a question. Um, let's see here. You should be using a closed jump ring. It well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you can, you can if you want to, like a soldered jump ring. You certainly can if you want. Um, would you use the bead stringing wire on wire on things? Um use the bead stringing wire on things. I've only ever used the German style wire and I have not strung anything yet. I'm new to beading. Well, welcome Patty, new beater. I love new beaters. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love new beaters. So welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. So um, I, for this project in particular, um, you definitely don't want to use bead stringing wire. You want to use something that you can knot with. Um, the bead stringing wire will knot, but it will not knot as, <laughs> it will not knot, not as tight. <laughs> um, so for the bead stringing wire, I would just thread the pearls on and maybe put like a little spacer bead between them or a bead bumper. Um, that really is, you know, that's a completely different, different technique, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you're here. That means that we can show you all kinds of fun things. <laughs> um, Linda says, I heard if you put the whole card in water and take it and then stretch it, you will not have those bins. That's so true. That is absolutely true. And, um, yeah, if the, if the, if the little kinks in it bother you, but really they, they don't ever bother me because once I get the beads on them, then I don't see it anymore. But yeah, you can stretch your, your cord out. You can hit it with a cool iron. Um, a ribbon iron will work as well. Um, but I've not ever really had any problems with the, with the bins. I feel like, you know, once I get the beads on there, they're gone. <laughs> Out of sight, out of mind, as you will. <laughs> okay, so where we left off before we, we lost connection was we had just knotted right above our focal here, our chunky monkey. And so now I thread on the rest of my pearls and I'm going to move those down a bit. Okay. All right, so we're, we're pretty close, right? But not right up against it. Now I'm going to take one, slide it down, okay? Just right up against the knot that we just created. And then I'm just gonna continue going, right? Just gonna keep going just like we were. So making the loop around my fingers. Now the only difference here is that you do have to be mindful of that piece of turquoise or your focal bead because it is gonna wanna trip you up, right? Okay, so loop around your two fingers, take your strand, 
drop it down through the loop that you made, take your tool, the hook, hook your cord, put your finger up against it, pull the knot up, up next to your pearl, put it into the yoke, pull, and deliver the knot, right? Okay, got more to go. So you're gonna get to see this plenty of more times. Okay, two fingers, lasso around, drop all the beads down into that hole. Okay, hook, put your finger on there to hold it, pull, okay. Thread through the, the yolk and it's a yolk, not a yolk. I made it sound like an egg yolk. <laughs> oh my, I am Southern. <laughs> Another bead down, loop around. So we were just repeating the same steps. Okay, hook, finger, pull, that, and there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna speed up a bit since we have already done a bunch of these. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go pretty quick through the rest of these. Okay, so if you need to see all this again, just be sure that you, um, you know, be sure you you check out the replay. It'll be available on Facebook, and then Joan always takes all of our videos after they're done and puts them on the YouTube channel so you can go and watch it on YouTube. I've had a lot of people tell me that when it comes to watching the replay, it's easier for whatever reason to watch the replay on YouTube. So if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you wanna watch the replays, try it out over there and see if it feels a little bit different. Um, I think it must be because it's easier to stop and start you know, or fast forward 10 seconds or rewind 10 seconds over on YouTube. Whereas I feel like that's, it's a little bit more tricky on Facebook to do it that way. Okay. Hook that into the yoke and deliver the knot. Okay. The next pearl loop around. I know, right? You guys are like between the jewel loom and the knotter tool. And then Motocraft says, don't forget the tying station. Oh, you guys, there are so many fun tools. <laughs> so many fun tools. And I get to play with all of them to show you guys which ones, you know, you are most drawn to. I have to have them all. <laughs> to have all of the tools. I have to collect the tools. I have a problem. All right, loops dropping down. It's funny because I got I just recently got Discovery Plus, um, you know, the streaming service which I absolutely love. <laughs> I haven't been reading because I've been watching things on Discovery Plus every night. And I just recently rediscovered that show Hoarders. Do you guys remember that show that they used to run on A&E? Well, it's on Discovery Plus. And if you're ever feeling like your house is a mess, I, tell, I, I encourage you to watch an episode of Hoarders because it'll make you rethink, oh, my mess is not that bad. But it's so funny because last night, one of the episodes that I watched was this guy who um, he liked to collect things from, um, you know, Vegas, big Vegas shows and things because he was in the Las Vegas area. So if people would get rid of their, um, you know, the stuff that they had in their buildings and their museums and all that stuff, had like he had like dinosaurs and spaceship recreations and things like that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. It's like his house is like a um, an amusement park. And I was like, oh, but man. I'm so like that with beads and tools. <laughs> like the rest of my house is clean and stuff, but um, I certainly have enough beads to uh, qualify for an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> beads and tools, they would come in and be like, do you have a shopping problem? <laughs> I think you're gonna need aftercare therapy. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, Tina says, if you ever think you have too many beads or supplies, watch hoarders. Exactly, exactly. That's how I was feeling last night. I was like, oh, you know, this should be making me feel better. But the truth is, is that I kind of have a bead hoard <laughs> and a tool hoard. So, yeah, I don't know that it, it necessarily helps me with that. But <laughs> but I feel like we're all in the same boat. Otherwise, you guys wouldn't be here. <laughs> 
right? We, we all kind of love beads and tools and techniques and fun things. So yeah, <laughs> loop around the fingers, drop all the beads through the loop you made in the center. Now our, our cord that we're dropping through, like that's a lot of beads to drop through, okay? Just go slow with that. Hook your thread, pull your, your knot, put that right into the yoke and push the tool. Okay, we've only got three more to go. Okay, there's our loop. Drop all the beads down. It takes it a little bit longer this time because we've got so many. Okay, hook your cord. Pull. Put the cord in the yoke. <laughs> Misery loves company. But are we really miserable? I think we're all pretty happy with ourselves <laughs> and our bead hoards. If, 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 if anything, I think we all feel like we need more. <laughs> So maybe we do need those aftercare therapy funds. <laughs> oh, goodness. Loop around. Drop all the beads down. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> all right. Take the tool. Hook your thread. Pull your knot. Put it in there and deliver the knot. Okay. And we've got one more bead to go. All right, so there's our loop. And we'll drop these down one last time. Okay. Whoops. Take your tool, hook your thread, pull, and push. And that's it. And that's it. That went really, really quickly. I know we lost connectivity there for a little while, right? But even in spite of that, it went really, really quickly. So here's what we've got. We have 13 pearls on one side. We've come down here to our chunky monkey focal bead, right? And then we just turned around and went up the other side, right? Well, actually the this side. <laughs> okay, so now we need to attach our other little connector here. Mine already has some, some leather attached to it. This one doesn't. We just need to put the leather on this one. Um, but again, now it's like, okay, we got to tie our, <laughs> we got to tie our silk to this and it can really, it can either be super, super easy or it can drive you crazy. In the meantime though, I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to this knot that we made on this side just so it can be kind of drying. It's not gonna get completely dry, but it's gonna be tacky enough that I can I can trim that off, okay? Okay. Now we gotta work on figuring out like the most, the easiest way to knot this on there that looks similar to this, I, I don't know. One of the things that I am going to do, though, is I'm going to cut my silk cord because I have way too much silk cord to mess with. So I'm going to cut off. I'm only going to leave myself, um, you know, uh, about eight inches. Now, I still have the needle on the end of my cord, and I have plenty of cord left. So you can take your card, if you didn't throw it away, and put the rest of your silk back on your card to use for another day, right? Don't throw it away save it because there's enough left over to make another necklace. There's enough to make a couple of bracelets here. So just put this to the side. Okay. All right. Now figure out how on earth we're going to tie this on here and make it look halfway decent. That's always the problem is like, because you can't Lark's head knot. You can't, it's, it's just going to look a little different. It's just going to be, I don't know. We're going to do the best that we can. Right. So I'll probably loop around my finger to make one of those little loopy doos here. Take that. I'd get it as close as I can. That was not very close. <laughs> This part stresses me out. It really, really stresses me out. This is, you know, there are some really great techniques for making this look pretty. I, I just, I don't know what they are. 
And I will be the first to admit that like, I'm not, I'm not good at this part because I want my knots to look the same and they just, they just don't. <laughs> I can try, but they just don't. I do the best that I can and like loop around my finger and make like this weird half hitch knot thing and you know, but at the end, just like I said, when we got started, it, it, all it matters is that you've got a secure connection here and it's not going to come undone. Right. So just kind of looped around. It looks close, right? I mean, it's not exact, but it's pretty close. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I can't be because it, it will stress me out to no end. Okay. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to trim some of it off. Not all of it, but I'm going to trim some of it off. Add my hypo cement, let that dry, and then I'll, tri I'll trim it as close to my knot as possible. The most important part here is just making a good knot and having some glue. The rest of it, that part's up to you. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to stress over that. <laughs> I just can't because it'll make me insane. Okay, so we've got that all ready. Now, for the other side, I have some, this is just some some lace, some leather lace that came on a card. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to do a little lark's head knot. As far as, whoa, sorry, you guys. As far as how you want to finish this off, that is really going to be um, up to you. You can just tie a knot in your leather. You can add beads to your leather. You can add, you know, hardware to your leather if you want to. I didn't grab any because I honestly thought we were going to be spending more time on the knotting and that this part, you know, just finishing the necklace off was going to be an afterthought. But I've got just these long lengths here, you know. You can tie those off however you want to. But we want to focus down here on the bottom so to finish off the centerpiece here. Um, let's see. Donna has a question. All right, let me roll back and see what Donna's question was. My knots are distant cousins several times removed. Why do you crack me up? Okay, I'm rolling back. What was Donna's question? I'm afraid I'm not going to get to go back far enough to see what it was. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you ever use the round things the knot hides in that has, wait. Do you ever use the round? Oh, like a clamshell. I do. Um, for this project, you you definitely could have used a clamshell for this to hide those knots. Instead of tying it on here, you could have hooked the, um, a lot of times the little clamshells will come with a, um, a little hooky and you just roll it into a loop and then you can use a jump ring or whatever. You, yes, 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 yes. So clamshells are going to be your best friend when it comes to pearls. Guys, next week, don't let me forget. I want to show you the clamshells too. Um, so that when we, when I show you how to start and finish, I can show you two different ways. Okay. Cause the, sh the clamshells are, are pretty important. Um, if you're not going to do it with the technique that I show you, um, let's see, I'm making my daughter's wedding jewelry. That would be good. What would be good instead of leather to make it more formal? Um, everybody is chiming in here. Uh, chain or velvet ribbon would be gorgeous absolutely gorgeous absolutely amazing yeah you could use a lot of different things here um if you didn't want to use the leather um uh, but i i'm kind of liking the thought of of ribbon that would be beautiful okay uh chain for the tassel part if you don't want a leather tassel um or you could use sorry ribbons you know sorry silks things like that to make a more um feminine looking tassel I have, my tassel is already ready. This is the color. This is the one that I'm going to use on the actual necklace. But since it's already made, that doesn't really teach you anything. So I'm going to use a different color to create a tassel just to show you how to do the tassel. And then we'll hook it on here and we will call it a day. Okay. So let me just show you with a different color what we're going to do for our tassel. I'm just going to use this. It's kind of a... It's like a vanilla color leather cord here. It's a flat cord. You don't have to use flat cord if you don't want to. Um, it's totally up to you, okay? Okay, so for my tassel, and I'm doing this, this is not, you know, this is definitely not a technical way of doing this. This is just kind of my 
quick tassel. So I'm just gonna take the end of my cord, kind of hold it like this. I'm gonna spread my fingers out as big as I want my tassel length to be, okay? So that's about as long as I want my tassel to be. Now I'm gonna wrap around my fingers with my cord, my leather, several times just to until it's the thickness that I want it to be, okay? So that looks pretty good to me. I've been around my fingers a few times. You can use an index card. You can use whatever you want to, but I, I, don't, I don't get hung up on, you know, all of that when it comes to leather tassels. When it comes to other tassels, I'm a little bit different about it. I'm a little bit more, um, you know, about technique and stuff. But with leather, I really kind of just let the leather do its thing and, you know, and let it be what it's going to be. Okay, so I have a loop of leather here. I need to cut it so that it's not a loop. So I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm pinching one, one end, okay? And then I'm just gonna cut the loops, okay? So now I have a bundle, right? I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter jump ring. You can use whatever you want to, okay? And if all your cord won't fit through the jump ring, you can open the jump ring, close it on there. My jump ring's big enough. I'm just gonna thread it, bring it to the middle, or what's, what's close to the middle here, okay? Ooh, it's, <laughs> it's shedding on me. All right, so bring your jump ring to the middle, pinch everything together, okay? So we've got the we've got the beginnings of our tassel. Now just lay all that down, okay? And you want to take another piece of your cord, give yourself, you know, several inches, okay? I'm going to make a U shape out of the end of my cord, okay? The short end is like, I don't know, a couple inches long and then I've got my long end. Making the U shape, I'm going to lay that loop that U shape down onto the top of all of my bundles. I'm gonna pinch it all together with my fingers and pick it all up, okay? Now, I'm gonna take the long end and wrap around. Three or four times, just whatever, you know? That may be too many for me. Just like so, okay? I've, I've wrapped around two or three times. Now, I want to very carefully take the end and I've got to work it underneath all of those wraps. So if you wanna make your wraps a little loose at first so that you can take the tail end of this, this was the top end of our short piece for our U. It's coming this direction. We wanna take our long end and go the opposite direction. So you gotta, you gotta wiggle it underneath your, your wraps here. And it's, you know, you can use a straw to do this or, you know, a needle if you want to. With leather, it's a little bit trickier just because it's it's thicker material. But you just wanna wiggle it until you get the tail end. There it is, do you see it right there? Grab a hold of it, use your tweezers if you need to, and then pull that through, okay? Now, pull the short end of your loop and the long end of your loop. This is the ugliest tassel I think I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because I've, I think I bundled too many times. All right, you're gonna pull the short end and pull the long end. And what you're gonna end up with is just, you just made a barrel knot basically, okay, around your, your tassel. And use your fingers to kind of wiggle it into the shape that you want it to be, okay? Don't, don't just settle with your barrel knot. You can really manipulate your cords around to get to get the knot that you want okay now you can trim off your ends I've got a little short piece here that I need to kind of tuck to the inside and then I need to trim off so that it's as even as possible right and the one that is coming up to the top you want to take your hypo cement a little dab of glue, let that dry, and then trim that off, and you've got yourself a tassel. Guys, this one looks like an octopus. This is like the ugliest tassel in the entire world, but if you make it nice and pretty, 
I did make this one yesterday and I was like, I'm not gonna, I will never be able to get it to look that nice again. So <laughs> I kept this one to add to the piece. This is the one we just made. You can see the hot mess versus the one that I actually took some time on, but the, the steps are the same. Okay. The steps are the same. <laughs> It's just a barrel knot. It's just this one looks like bundled spaghetti or an octopus. This one looks like it's supposed to. <laughs> okay, now between here, you can add something if you want to, or you can just link these directly to each other. I have one more of those little connectors from Tierra Cast. So I'm actually going to use two more jump rings to attach it just so that it, it kind of brings that that metal piece at the top into the bottom of the necklace as well thank you guys for for laughing and understanding the struggle with the tassel i promise <laughs> i can make a pretty tassel um but yeah i just i got a little overzealous with that one. <laughs> oh gosh okay so just two six millimeter jump rings to connect all of this and then i'm just going to hook that to the bottom of our our chunk piece here and there you go you've got a really pretty centerpiece for your necklace right and if you wanted to dress this up for wedding jewelry definitely definitely use something more um feminine for your tassel maybe do some crystals in here instead of a piece of hardware you really can make this a very elegant design this one is very boho very rustic looking right you've got your pearls but you also have like the natural the natural chunky stone and then you've got your leather and so you can take the exact same design and change it up um, just by, you know, just by making some adjustments, I think that you definitely can make a very dressy um, necklace out of this just by changing the leather to something, to something a little softer, right? So there you go, guys. We knotted some pearls today. It's pretty exciting. All right, I'm going to turn you around and show you what this looks like hanging. And then we will part ways just for today because tomorrow's Feel Good Friday. Who's ready? I am. I am. I'm ready for Feel Good Friday. <laughs> All right. So it's a really long, long necklace, right? And you don't have to make it nearly as long if you don't want to. Uh, I am going to shorten it up on the bust so that you can kind of get a better feel for what it looks like. It's still long on the bust, but... There are all of our pearls that we did, which was the most important part of the entire thing. And then you've got your cool tassel down here at the bottom. Just a really fun project that, um, you know, I, I hope that I showed you how to knot pearls in a way that was understandable. It's, it's such a beautiful look. I feel like it is underused because people think that it's hard and it's really not as complicated as I feel like others have shown it to be. Um, there are some really good examples out there of how to do it. I hope that I did them justice, <laughs> but then there are also some very confusing ways. You know, I, I feel like people try to make it way too hard and it really isn't. It's all about the loop and then the direction that you hook that thread. Once you get that part down, you're going to be knotting everything because then you feel what it feels like and you're like, ooh, what's this going to feel like with my, you know, with my uh, rose quartz beads? What's this going to feel like with my Swarovski beads? What's it going to feel like with my Czech glass beads? It all makes, the silk in particular makes everything feel so luxurious. So I think you'll be surprised. And I, I would, I would probably bet money on it being that um, some of you will absolutely fall in love with it because it's one of those things that once you get a hold of and you figure it out you kind of you know you kind of get addicted to it because of the rhythm that happens uh, I, I sit and watch tv and not I have so many strands next week I'll show you a lot of the things that I have that are hand knotted that are my personal pieces just because I love the way that it feels so all right, guys, that's it for me today, but tomorrow is Feel Good Friday. Feel Good Friday. Tomorrow, we had a question about bead stringing wire earlier. So um, if you are still here, tomorrow we're using bead stringing wire. Tomorrow, we're making, since it's Feel Good Friday, it's quick, easy, fun projects for Feel Good Friday. Nothing hard. We're going to do some bead stringing. All we're going to do is we're going to thread some pearls on one side we're doing chunky chain on the other side and a charm in the middle because that's what's everywhere
for spring and summer is the half and half chunky chain of pearls it's it's everywhere look it up oh my gosh the styles just from the most beautiful to the most crazy so look them up that's what we're doing tomorrow it's going to be easy and fun we're just going to focus on bead stringing and crimping technique and that's all it's going to be a really cool trend um on trend piece that also considered to be a classic because we're using more pearls next week on tuesday for um uh, technique tuesday i will show you guys how to start and finish uh pearls in a different way than this okay i'll show you how if you wanted to just make a, a pearl bracelet or a pearl necklace with nothing else on it i'll show you how to correctly attach the hardware okay because it is a technique all in itself so we'll do that i'm glad that you guys were interested in learning how to do that i'm more than happy to show it to you so that's what we'll do um, how did you close off the ends for the back? I didn't. I didn't because I I honestly wasn't even thinking that when I put this project together, we would get to that point because of I thought we might spend more time on the pearls. So I just left my ends. I just left mine hanging. You can use um, cord ends and, you know, and finish off the ends and just add hardware. You could tie it in a knot. There's a lot of different things you could do. I um I just didn't think we would get that far. <laughs> I surprised myself. So I'm sorry that I didn't show you a, an actual technique. I really, if if I would have gotten the hardware out, it would have been just some um, some cord ends, you know, just some of those fold over cord ends with a pair of pliers and then just attached jump rings and a clasp to the end. Um, Joan said for me to tell you that she lost internet. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for telling me, Jane. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm done for today, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Also looking forward to next week. So have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the Thursday. You guys, the weekend is in sight. I can see it. I can smell it. Speaking of which, I'm doing a virtual Michaels class on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to go sign up for that, go to the Michaels website. There is a link in the Sarah Ellis Designs community if you want to go to directly to it, or you can just find it over on the Michaels um, page. Okay. All right, guys, have a great one, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.